I just watched Michael's uh, newest video, and I'll tell you what, it makes me extremely happy to hear him say the things he's saying, because I feel the exact same way. Exactly. I love stand-up comedy, probably more than anything. I love it more than music. Um, when I was a kid, uh, when I was about 12, 12, 13, how old are, are you when you start buying music, when kids start actually going to record stores and music stores and buying their own music? Probably 12, 13. I think it was like 6th or 7th grade. All my friends were buying uh, music uh, cassettes back then. Um, you know, Michael Jackson, shit like that. The very first album that I bought was George Carlin, A Place for My Stuff. Um, and I kept buying comedy albums. I probably didn't buy a music album until I was 16. It was, you know, first George Carlin, then Eddie Murphy, Sam Kinison, Steve Martin, Bill Cosby, Richard Pryor, um, Woody Allen. I was, as a child, into any form of stand-up comedy I could get. And uh, I think that all started when I was listening to Dr. Demento. I had this transistor radio with a, a little earpiece. And my parents would make me to go to bed on a Sunday night. Well, every night. But on Sunday nights, Dr. Demento was on at like 9 o'clock at night. My parents would put me to bed. I'd put the ear thing in so my parents couldn't hear me. And I would listen to Dr. Demento. And that's all I ever listened to. I didn't give a shit about music. Um, and Dr. Demento turned me on to George Carlin. So I was into stand-up comedy at a really early age. I came from a very conservative religious family community. I didn't know anybody in entertainment. I didn't know it was an actual possibility to go into entertainment or stand-up comedy specifically. I just knew I loved it more than anything. I first did stand up probably 22 years ago. In, in, I think I was 19. And uh, it was at the Ice House here in Pasadena. And, um, you know, it was one of those things where all your friends come. And so, of course, your friends will laugh at you. And I, I was hooked. I thought I was great because all my friends were laughing. But I was horrible. Like Mike said, like how you say you're bad at writing jokes, I am a million times worse at writing jokes. And it wasn't until I started going to do other places that I realized how shitty I was. And it was very discouraging for me. So I kind of stopped. I would do it off and on throughout college. But I wouldn't cons would never have called myself a comedian, a stand-up com comedian. And this went through college. This went, you know, even when I moved to L.A. with my band and doing music, I still loved comedy. I would go to shows. I was going to Largo when Mr. Show was going on and watching all these, like Sarah and Patton and Bob and David. And I was just in awe of these people. But uh, I was bad at stand-up because I couldn't write jokes. And then uh, I, I've done it off and on very poorly and sporadically, you know, for 22 years. Never saying I was a comedian it was just something I would attempt once in a while. Then when I got Sarah's show, it opened up a lot of doors. All of a sudden, people were asking me, do you do stand-up? <laughs> and these were paying gigs, you know, with Sarah, you know, or at Largo with Zach Galifianakis, with, with anybody. And, like, doors would... And I, like Michael, I felt so guilty that this was how I kind of broke into like doing stand-up more regularly uh, was because of a TV show. It wasn't because for 22 years I've worked my way up to it. 
I was shitty at it the entire time. Never, you know, considered doing it full time at all. <clears throat> I've gotten a lot better to where now I can call myself a stand up, I feel. Um, and I owe that to three people. Uh, maybe more, I mean, George Carlin, first of all, for making me ever want to do stand-up, but I wouldn't say he was an influence because I, I can never do that kind of comedy. Um, but Sarah, first of all, for giving me the opportunity, hands down, has always been very encouraging. Uh, secondly, Louis C.K., just from, I, I know him through Sarah, I wouldn't say we're, we're friendly, I wouldn't say we're friends, but just watching him, seeing someone who does, who's a stand-up comedian, who doesn't do jokey jokes, you know, doesn't, he definitely works on jokes, this is stuff that he's written, but they're not like punchline, you know, set up punchline type things, um, huge influence made me realize that you didn't have to write jokes like stereotypical jokes that you would hear at a comedy club to be a comedian and thirdly and probably most Im importantly Janine Garofalo we were hanging out she was in LA a few years ago doing 24 and she was living here for a while and we hung out a lot and I would tell her, I was like, I feel like a sham when I'm on stage. I hate the stuff that I've written. I don't think it's that funny. I don't like writing jokes. And she said to me, don't write jokes then. Talk about what you fucking know. And it seems like a total no-brainer, but it's true. It's just, it's life experiences. And talking about your life experiences and not... This is, I'm sure, so fucking boring to everybody watching right now. But I feel, after listening to Michael, I need to vent all this stuff. Um, so Janine's advice, I took it, I threw out all my shitty jokes. Like, shitty fucking jokes. Like, ugh, I live in the valley, it was so hot today, I masturbated and shot a load of sweat. Kind of funny but so fucking hacky, and I never liked doing that kind of shit. Um, threw it all out, stopped doing it. And now it's more story type stuff, like, like Michael's doing. And it's, it's completely made me feel better on stage. I'm happier doing comedy, although it still terrifies me. Um, yeah. I don't know, and I still, to this, I mean, I still feel guilty, like Mike, like I know, like so many of my friends are comedians who've been doing it for, since they were in high school, you know, and they've really fucking worked their asses off, and, uh, you know, here, I didn't work my ass off, I got on a TV show, and all of a sudden, you know, I'm going out and doing theaters with Sarah for like 3,000 people. <laughs> and I feel like I completely don't deserve it. Um, but we all have our own paths. You know, so I can say to Michael, you shouldn't feel guilty. And uh, you obviously want to do it. You don't need to, like you said. It's just something inside of us, and it's fucking very masochistic. And uh, I actually said that to somebody on Twitter today. They were like, I hope Michael doesn't stop doing com touring. I was like, he can't. He's masochistic. Every comedian is, basically. Shit, this is like nine minutes long. I'm going to stop this. You all get the point.